Uh, Kent, we have a, a guest in the panel. I, I want to make sure that you're okay with uh, doing a sure, discussion. Sure. It's, uh, it is the user that has uh, been kind of, um, how shall I say, conflicting sometimes. Uh, are you interested in having an open discussion with Atheist Jr.? Oh, oh sure. Atheist Jr., I'll have a whole debate with him. I've only got about 30 more minutes, though, Brett. So, AJ, good to hear from you. When are you going to get converted? Go ahead. Oh, I, I don't know. How, how are you doing, Kent? How was your new year? Oh, the day's been great. God, God, I love it. It looks cold here today. It's only like 50 degrees, you know. I'm ready for I, I more. Know. So, um, could I know you were talking about the um, uh, Mark of the Beast thing, but uh, I, w I would like to talk about evolution uh, since that was the title of the video, sure. if that's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So I, I watched the video that you did with the Catholic evolutionist water. Uh, I really enjoyed that one. And he brought up a point that uh, when you're saying we've only observed dogs produce dogs, that the implication is that you think evolution means or teaches that a dog is going to give birth to something like a fox or like a jackal or a fish is that what well, you no, what I, no not at all what i point out is all we've ever observed in human history is dogs produce dogs a coyote wolf and dog are probably the same kind of animal uh so the the textbooks though show a family tree where you have a protozoa or a single cell creature producing a dog so you guys like to point out we don't see a dog producing a non-dog, and they say that's not what evolution says. It does say the protozoa produced a dog. No, that's it's, no. Not science. no. Yes, it it's does. Not, no, it, it, you're conflating two different things. So I asked you uh, in a couple different questions on debates. What or in, when we debated, I, I asked you, what do you mean when you? You how do you define the word produce? And you said that that means to give birth. And I asked you, what is a non-dog? And you gave an example of something like a, a fox or, or a, a like a dingo. So when you say we've only uh, seen or dogs produce dogs, what you're saying is that evolution teaches that a dog gave birth to a fox or something that was a non-dog, something that was like a different species, and it doesn't teach that. Now, I know that you're going to talk about over millions of years, over many generations, or uh, dogs have a common ancestor. That's a different thing. So you're pivoting to a totally different topic. But it's a straw man to say that evolution teaches that a dog gave birth to a fish. I don't say that. The yes, amoeba, no, the amoeba produced everything on this family tree. Kids, we paid money to print this textbook for our kids to learn from. It shows humans and ferns and sharks and everything going back to a single celled creature. Somewhere along the line, somebody is producing something that ain't their kind. A protozoa okay. turning to a biology teacher is what the kids are being taught. Now, I don't, you can put a trillion steps in there or 400 quadrillion uh, steps in there. The point is, it doesn't happen. What we observe is protozoa make baby protozoa all the time. So you do this all the time, AJ. You say, well, you know, dogs producing foxes, this, this is not what evolution teaches. Yes, it is. You do teach. Do you believe you came from a single cell creature like a protozoa of some kind over millions of years? Is that your ancestor? Okay, you're, you're pivoting, you're changing the topic. I want to talk about dogs producing some dogs giving birth to dogs. So right. dogs and other, any animal is only going to give birth to an animal that's the same species. So you just said that evolution does teach that dogs give birth to something that's not a dog. No, but it doesn't I, I teach said that. The, that's a straw man. And then you pivot to a single celled organism. Why can't we just stay on the topic of a dog? Well, well may, if, may I say something real quick? Junior, you said that uh, Kent is misrepresenting evolution, but he's actually saying what it is the scientists are claiming. And I can give an example here if you guys don't mind. You're going to see this is the reason why Christians are questioning evolutionists. Let me give you an example fish. Human beings are still fish. Human beings are fish? Why, yes, of course they are. How long did that take? A couple of billions of years. Millions. A couple of millions? Yep. How is that observable? 
It's not. Do you believe we all came from sponges, Dave? Do you believe this textbook yes. is right? Yes. But my 200 million greats-grandfather was a fish. And by the way, the same fish was your 200 million greats-grandfather. <laughs> We're all African apes. We're apes with a shave. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm out in the woods, I'm full-on wolf. Like, if I'm with close friends, what's the problem? Yeah, and what so, are you doing when you're out there? Um, so we're running around. We do kind of play it as wolves. Like on all fours? Uh, at times, yes. Sometimes we're two-legged, making wolf vocal stuff. But here's something I might do when I'm out there as far as a howl. Sure. <laughs> that always gets me. As you can see, yeah. these are the scientists who are claiming this. These are the PZ Myers. AJ, so that, uh, uh, that, Brett, let me finish AJ's question because he does this to me all the time. I do not say dogs produce non-dogs. I do say, read my lips, dogs came from a non-dog, didn't they? You're pivoting. You're changing the no, topic. You, you, won't, you won't just answer the question. Your charts show an amoeba turning to a dog. Once you, get, once you get dogs, the Bible says they bring forth after their kind. Dogs will always produce dogs. There's a, tr a family tree of dogs. There's another family tree of strawberries. They're not connected in, any deeper than that. That's what you don't, you don't either don't understand or deliberately try to muddy the water. You believe you came from an ancestor like a fish, like Stephen or Dawkins, whatever the guy's name says. But going forward, you'll always produce humans. And you'll argue that that's not evolution. This book is part of an evolution textbook, and they teach dogs came from a protozoa. Going forward, they will always make dogs. Going backwards, they always came from dogs. But you want to go backwards and have them come from a protozoa or a single-celled creature, don't you, AJ? So you just, said, go, you just said going forward, they always produce dogs. Maybe you don't mean to, to say it, but by implication, what you're saying is that evolution teaches that God, dogs give birth to non-dogs. That's what you're no. implying. Yes, you're it is. Dogs. Wait a minute. Yes, no, it it, it's the theory of evolution itself that tries to say things are going to evolve into something from an ancestor that it's totally different from. That's not the creation narrative. That's, that's the evolutionary narrative, and we need to stay on point with that. You're not going to swift us with your guys' baggage. No, thank you. Dogs came from an amoeba in your religion. I don't believe that. I think there's a family tree of dogs, and God said 24 times in the first seven chapters they would bring forth after their kind. There's certainly a family tree of dogs. Wolves, coyotes, dogs probably had a common ancestor, and it looked like a dog. But you want to go back billions of years in your imagination and make them connected to a protozoa. That's where it's insane. Evolution teaches all life forms came from a single-celled creature. Do you believe the dogs all came from a single-celled creature over billions or trillions of years, AJ? I don't know what you mean by came from. What do you mean came from? Oh, he oh, means brother. evolves from, AJ. You know what he's talking about. Answer no, the I question. No, if you have an answer on behalf of evolution, answer a legitimate question. You never do that. Okay. okay it, can I, I would just I would just like Kent to stay on one topic. He keeps yeah. changing the topic. It would be much easier for Pastor Hoven to stay on topic if you would answer even a single question and not try to slide a hand us with your guys' baggage. We're not the ones who claim anything turns into something else over billions of years. That's the claim of you evolutionists. Yeah. But I, you, I, under, I, you understand, Junior. Question, you understand, Junior, that uh, Mr. Hovind is showing you presentations of what they teach in school, what they teach in college. This is the concept of it. You get what he's talking about. Do you believe that you were snot on a rock and then went through all kinds of changes and then learned how to do love ballads billions of years later? No, AJ, can I, can I ask you a different question? I ask you, AJ, can I ask you the question in a in a different way? Do you believe? evolution from a universal common ancestor happened as a real historic event and as a fact do you actually believe that so i'm asking it in that way as a real historic event ignore the processes behind natural selection i'm talking about as in a real historic event yes but the reason that i don't like answering this question is because kent is asking a completely pointless question. He does this in every single debate. 
he's it's a creation versus evolutionist debate and he asks every single person do you think that you're related to a dog can you know that the other person thinks common ancestry is true so you already know the answer to that question you're just asking them oh do you think that you're related to a sponge and then they say yes and then the people in the audience laugh. You're just making fun of people. You already know the answer. So that's why I don't like answering it because it's a pointless question. The answer is yes. I think Is it that it's a pointless question or is that it's embarrassing for you guys to answer because you know you have to admit that you believe you're part banana? Come on, AJ, talking. try harder. I, I'm not done talking, so you don't have to interrupt me. I think common ancestry is true. I think animals have common ancestry. I think evolution happened. I think that I'm related to a dog. I think I'm related to X fruit, X animal there. So you don't have to ask that same question over and over and over again, Ken. Yes, animals have common ancestry. Evolution mm. happened. I, I think that. I think I, I think a lot a lot of creation and evolution debates come down to word play and word definitions, which is why a lot of people end up talking at cross purposes. But I think he's trying to explain in such a in a nice, simple way that that everybody every day can just understand without going to the rabbit hole of like trying to redefine words and all this kind of stuff. And when you use the word related to, that's a valid term, you know, because you're related to a second cousin, you're related to a second cousin once removed. Yeah. So that's a valid term. So if you broaden that out to the millionth cousin once removed, what would that look like? You see, so again, it's these words that e evolutionists tend to try and, you know, people try and focus on the word rather than the actual what is being meant. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, but right. I, I think right. defining your terms in a debate is important. I think that's a good thing, though. Yeah. Okay, let me let me chime in for to make it real clear, AJ. I believe there is a family tree of dogs. I believe there's a family tree of ladybugs. There are 20,000 species of ladybugs, I think, is what they come up with now. They might have had a common ancestor called a ladybug. That's where it stops. That does not prove the roots go deeper on that tree and the ladybugs and the dogs have a common ancestor. But you want to hide behind this propaganda that we see dogs always produce dogs, okay, but yet you believe dogs came from something non-dog, but you don't want to talk about that. That's what I object to. The textbook says, all the many forms of life on earth today, that would include the dogs and AJ, are descended from a common ancestor. This is propaganda. This isn't science. This is a religious belief. And it's found in a population of primitive unicellular organisms. No traces of those events remain. These family trees are evil. They're propaganda. They're not science. There is a family tree of humans. You probably had grandparents and great-grandparents and great great you and I might have a common ancestor if we go back far enough. But we you and might. my dog do not have a common ancestor. So I think we go back. The, you said that the strawberries might have a common ancestor. So do you not know? No, the straw. I don't know how many kinds of strawberries the, they have. I'm sorry, the ladybugs. Ladybugs might have a common ancestor. So I, do I've you not, not know? Lady, I've not studied ladybugs in the laboratory to know, but I think it's logical to say that all the varieties of ladybugs might have had a ladybug ancestor, just like all the humans might have had a human ancestor. But you jump to the wild conclusion that that is proof ladybugs and humans have a common ancestor. No, I this don't. This chart shows it. Yeah, you do. So, you believe so ladybugs and humans. Right here. Humans, you think you, humans might have a common ancestor, so you don't know. So that means it's not science, right? I'm only 70 years old. I haven't observed humans for billions or trillions of years. We know in the laboratory and in reality, humans only produce humans. I bet your parents were human. I bet your grandparents were human. I bet we could go back to Noah getting off the ark with eight humans. But that doesn't prove you're related to a ladybug. So you but said you think humans you only are. produce you humans? Does that mean you think evolution teaches that humans gave birth to something that's not a human? No, humans always give birth to humans. That's the point. I agree. Yeah, you, I agree. You know, but you believe that a protozoa slowly gave birth to a human. Little bit at a time. How do you, how, a protozoa can't give birth to anything. Okay, protozoa make babies. This chart shows a protozoa being the great, 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 great grandparent of everything. That's not science. That's saying a religion. That, saying that protists give birth and make babies isn't science, Ken. AJ, okay. can I, so, yeah. Some division might saying, though, 
You know what he's saying, AJ? He's saying that over millions of years, you reproduce, and then you get to human eventually. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's pretty much in the summary of what the the atheist yeah. evolutionists are claiming. No, I'm, I'm that's not going to grant Kent him Hoban's, that. That's not Kent Hovind's assertion. He's battling against the stupidity. I I don't understand why it is they try to put the the burden on him. But I got a question for you, Junior, having to do with evolution. Can you explain what variables in the environment cause pain receptors, brain signals, and a nervous system? I'd like to know what was happening in the environment that made this happen. Uh, what happened in the environment to cause pain receptors? Yes, it is believed that in order for evolution to have changes on an atomical structure, there has to be something happening in the environment that impacts the creature or living thing itself. So the question again, I'll repeat it, can anyone, including yourself, explain what variables in the environment caused pain receptors, brain signals, and the complexity of the nervous system? Well, um you would probably have a an organism that was very early in evolution that needed to be able to sense its surroundings and be able to tell if a predator was trying to eat it or bite it. So that's a selection pressure that you know, would uh, encourage involving nervous, a nervous system. Does but, evolution care if you die or if a creature gets mauled by a bear? Does it care? No, nature is very indifferent to animal suffering. It, it's very brutal. Yeah, AJ, yeah, I'd like to um, uh, kind of read a, a little bit of a science paper to you. You okay. know what you were saying earlier, whereby you actually believe it's a fact, yeah? So that, that you believe it's a fact that evolution from the universe of common ancestor actually occurred in history and that science proves your claim, yeah? I don't believe that, it. I just I just agree. Or accept. With okay, if you the, want to use uh, the accept, word accept. Okay. I accept the scientific consensus. I agree with the uh, evidence. Okay, right. I'll read you from a scientific paper called A Formal Test of the Theory of Universal Common Ancestry. The abstract states, the classic evidence for universal common ancestry, although massive, is largely restricted to local common ancestry for example, of specific phyla rather than the entirety of life and has yet to fully integrate the recent advances from modern phylogenics and probability theory. Although universal common ancestry is widely assumed, so I'll repeat that, although universal common ancestry is widely assumed, it has rarely been subjected to formal quantitative testing and this has led to critical commentary emphasizing the intrinsic technical different difficulties in empirically evaluating the theory of such broad scope. That's that's a scientific position. Okay. Now, so it's it widely assumed. To, to put the link to that in the private chat, could you do that? Yeah. Junior, so while he's getting the information for you, though, you didn't exactly uh, answer the question. You said, well, we had to have this in order for us to be able to have the advantage or benefit of being able to run whenever a creature's coming after us or trying to eat us. But this doesn't explain why we even have pain receptors to begin with or why the complex nervous system came into existence. You're kind of giving us the horse, but not the carriage here, sir. Well, you're, it's, a, it's an extremely complex topic, and I don't know the exact answer to that. But if I had to give like a, a, a general answer, I would say that an a, a early ancestor of humans, so not a human, so this is a long time ago in evolution, would need to be able to sense its surroundings. And so that would be a selection pressure for developing nerves and a nervous system. But as a central told, nervous system is, and pain past, receptors are a different thing. Mr. Junior, as I told Kent in the past, it would be very uh, advantageous for me and beneficial to grow bat wings so I can save on gas. Yeah, it sounds like it could be something I would need, but you're, you're not giving us the reason how evolution would have done this. 
You're not telling us why the pain receptors came into existence, why the nervous system. You're just simply telling us what it does. We already know what pain receptors do. I don't know how many times Kent hit his hand with a hammer while doing his construction. He knows what an ouch means. How did it get there, though? Um, I you asked me what would what was the uh, reason that we would have a nervous system. The variables in the environment, what was going on in the environment that would make such a complex construction of this? Predation. Would you uh, elaborate, please? Predators try to eat other animals, so they need to be able to sense their surroundings so that they can survive long enough to reproduce. That's a selection That's pressure. Does evolution That's care about our needs, Kent? Well, he's, he's making up a story. Where's the science behind this? He'd make up a story. Well, we need this, so it, we evolved it because we needed it. There have been many times I needed a third arm to hold something when I'm trying to get the door open. This, this is insane. This isn't science. I wish you could see it, AJ. You're a fairy tale storyteller is all you are. Evolution Nothing. is a fairy tale for grown-ups. We don't ever yeah. see this to say, well, we, somebody must have needed it, so it evolved. This is making up a story. My point is, even if it's true, at this point, it's not science, it's not observable, get it out of the textbooks. These family trees are religion. We also, the other thing is that that is Lamarckism, and science has generally debunked Lamarckism. You know, yeah. it, um, the environment does obviously contribute to a phenotype being expressed, depending on whether you're in a cold environment or a hot environment, etc. But you're dealing with very complex interdependent processes here so as soon as you take two organs three organs four organs which are all in interdependent and you start to take away that in interdependence through gradual changes things Randy. will start to break and that's a lot of the problem so you know? i never i never said that they evolved a nervous system because they needed it so DNA replicates and mutations happen randomly. And those mutations are either beneficial or they're harmful or neutral. And the beneficial ones are gonna be selected for at a rate that's higher than 0%. And animals are going to adapt to their environment. It's, they didn't get anything because they needed or wanted it. It's just uh, mutations happen and those are gonna get selected for. So I didn't say anything about it needing uh, <clears throat> okay, AJ, would you please give the best example you know of, of a beneficial mutation? Uh, well, beneficial mutations are context specific. So a mutation that's beneficial in one environment for one organism might not be beneficial for a different organism. But there's examples okay. of humans that have thicker bones and stronger bones from mutations that are resistant to breaking there's uh, mutations that cause resistance to HIV. There's people who live in high altitudes who have uh, ha developed mutations in their family where they can breathe more easily uh, than somebody who came from a lower uh, altitude. Uh, just one, one at a time now. Okay. There are humans that have thicker bones. I would agree. Bone density. That's not a mutation. They already have bones to start with. I have them. You have them. So you didn't add any new information. Getting a stronger yes. bone, getting a stronger, this is not new information. They already had a bone. Yeah, now, but I agree. It, the mutation made it stronger. That is new information. Every mutation is new information because it's changing one letter of, of uh, the nucleotide sequence to a different letter. So that's new information. If you guys well, don't mind real quick, I'd like to show what the definition of an actual mutation is. Any change in the DNA sequence of a cell, mutations may be caused by mistakes during cell division, or they may be caused by exposure of damaging agents in the environment. That's not adding information. That's damages. That's not beneficial at all. Yeah, DNA tries to replicate itself perfectly, but it is never going to. There's going to be replication errors. That doesn't inherently mean that it's a bad thing. It could lead to a mutation that's beneficial, or it could lead to one that's totally neutral. This is well, your Kent imagination. Asked you earlier. Go ahead. No, Kent, it's sorry. not. It's genetic science. Well, it's not imagination. I'd like to, 
that's why I said, what's the best example? You run off on five of them. Let's just pick one. Yeah, I gave okay. multiple. Well, that, that you gave multiple to muddy well, the you water. You say there are one. none. You say there are none. I gave three. Okay. You think humans with thicker bones came from a mutation. I'd like you to send me information on that. I'll study that up and get ready for that. No, you as won't. As you won't read it if I send you anything. You won't read it. You're lying. AJ, I will read anything you send me. If it's short enough, I got time for I got busy you, life. You've said that when people have. AJ, AJ, AJ keep it professional. So times, AJ, keep it professional. Do it. You never research Clamidomonas, and you always say I, that. I have a video of you saying it in five different debates. Okay. So you're lying, Kent. Okay, I have so, plenty to do. I'm real busy. I need to go now, actually. But, AJ, <laughs> you don't care where, about where science is, at all, Ken. You don't care about science. I told science. him at the beginning. I had a, an hour. I told him a half hour ago. I got about another half hour. Okay, now, and I didn't. And you were not at the time, so I wasn't. I'm not running from you at all. Believe me, I'll take you on any time in a debate. So, I mean, you're, you're claiming that a mutation causing thicker, denser bones is beneficial, and is a result of evolution and a DNA replication error. And that's the process you want to count on that's going to change uh, an amoeba or a protozoa into a whale or a human. You think slow, gradual accumulation of trillions of mutations changed a single-celled creature. I'll put it up on screen again for you here. You believe these kind of charts that a single-celled creature turned to everything today by mutations. Is that your answer? The topic. Why can't you ever stay on one topic, Kent? All right, uh, Mr. Junior, you're not answering any of his questions, and it's obvious I I that he's been in over 300 debates. He's doing an open discussion, allowing anybody and everybody to come at him with whatever. So for you to say that he's not intellectually honest or open to discussion is an absolute lie, sir. He has he not believed. learned anything in 300 debates. Oh, okay. Well, let's say what. Have another one called Standing for Truth. We'll have another one tomorrow night. Uh, and, you, and you give me the best evidence you have. And where's the evidence for evolution? You want this kind of chart taught to all the kids in school. You believe you came from a protozoa. You want, to, you want me to pay to have the kids taught that. That's evil. That's propaganda. That's not science. There's probably a family tree of birds that go back to a common ancestor called a bird. Why would you connect the birds and the frogs on a chart like this? This isn't science. Genetics. Science is what we observe, study, test, and demonstrate. You think an, a change in the DNA, a random change, a mutation, is going to change something into a frog and something else into a bird. No, that's, that's a straw man. Imagination. That's imagination. That's what man. they're showing the kids. No, that's not. You're lying. All right. We got another user in. And as I said at the very beginning, the rules are people have to control themselves. You have to behave. You don't get personal. You got to have a discussion. We got someone called one over pi, I suppose. Nice name. How are you? You have I'm to act. Yes. You have to unmute your microphone and then speak. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can. You're coming through clear. What you got for us, sir? Uh, I've been researching a lot about genetics lately. I don't like biology, by the way. I want to debate you, uh, Kent, sometime later. But um, genetic mutations don't always remove information under sometimes they... Th there's this thing called a reference frame mutation, which can basically insert uh, a gene into already existing DNA, moving everything across, which causes new uh, RNA to be formed, which causes new proteins. This is new information being added, which would in turn cause unexpected mutations, especially if they're at the end of already existing uh, beneficial genes or unused genes. Okay, this is a belief that you have. Has this been demonstrated to change it to any other kind of animal or plant? Well, well the, the, the changing into other kinds of animals, we can't observe this because that's, that's again, millions of years of, of oh. tiny, tiny, tiny changes over right, a very right. big time frame. But the things we do see, these changes occur in small, small forms. But the thing is, if you repeat this over and over and over, what is preventing an animal from changing? Kent, I'm pretty sure the very definition of science is it's got to be observable. This, our well, man here just told us it ain't even observable. So what he believes tale. in is faith-based. Well, okay. and I have a question for him, too. I would like to know if he could explain to us when we evolved a soul. Tell you what, Brett, hang on a second. I, 
I, I'm sorry, brother. It's been an hour and a half. I got to go. But why don't you have both of these guys, one over Pi and uh, AJ, uh, pick one particular topic. If you want it to be mutations, let's schedule a debate on your channel. And Brett, you moderate equal time, no interrupting, one topic at a time. I'll it debate them both great. same time. That sounds great. And people, you also had the opportunity to go over to Standing for Truth. And if you want a full on debate like that where everything's timed and not quite the open discussion we have over here, he's got a great channel. Kent's got a lot of material over there, and I'm sure he'd love to debate anybody. Just get a hold of Donnie over there. Um, yeah. One over pie, I'm going to ask you one more question, and I'm going to let Kent uh, get out of here because he's got a very, very busy existence. The question was asked to AJ earlier. Can you explain the variables in the environment that caused pain receptors, brain signals, and the nervous system to come into existence? Well, small mutations could have caused just nerves, like individual cells of nerves, to exist. Now, that in itself wouldn't have been necessarily beneficial. But the thing is, if you connect that to being able to feel just your environment, just feel, not even pain, just being able to sense what's happening around you, you would have more information on, on how to survive, how to run. You would know that hot water is hot and cold water is cold, and that isn't beneficial to your survival, and you would now know this. That, okay. that The thing is, small mutations that could cause this inherently I'm sorry, are the magic word is mutation all the time. Mutation can, I, can, mutation. I, can I jump in on that real quick? Well, um, well, before we do that, let's, get, let's give Kent the opportunity to get out okay. of here. Let's uh let's give SpongeBob a tug and a hammer real quick and <laughs> let's uh let's let Kent get out of here. Thank you, Kent, for being a part of the show. Always excellent whenever you're involved. We'll schedule a debate and always it's imagination and lots of time. You guys need some real science. What you have just demonstrated for the world to see is you have a religious belief that it happened. You don't have any science. We don't observe cows produce non-cows. You can believe it if you want, and you do. Great, congratulations, but it's not science. And I resent we that. We share 80% of our DNA with cows. Hey, schedule you know schedule that, right? the debate. I got to go. Thank yeah. you, Pastor, for being All with right. Brett and I. Bye-bye. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to put uh, Mr. Proverbs up on the screen. Let's see what we got. Let me take this uh, banner off, and then we'll talk for a few minutes and then end the show. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Rob, did you have a good time? I've had a brilliant time, my friend, and uh, I've sent AJ a scientific paper that says that science confirms that evolution from USA CA is just widely assumed. That's all it is in science. So at least you'd think that the militant atheists would actually.